But the weirdest thing about this is that I remember the moment when I'm going down the street and I have no money, like just absolutely nothing, just zero. And I felt like the happiest guy on the planet, man. All right, so welcome. This um, is a new kind of podcast series. Right. And uh, to be honest, I just felt like doing it. I mm -hmm. doesn't have any purpose, right. just talking a little bit. Yeah, I like And talking. <laughs> I can talk forever. <laughs> That's good. That's why you're my first guest, uh, actually. Yeah. Especially if I'm getting paid, yeah. <laughs> Not today, I guess. And uh, yeah. Let's start. Mm -hmm. This conversation doesn't have any purpose. <coughs> It just has to be fun. Right. Should be a bit inspiring, I guess. And uh, we want to talk about stories that happened in your life. Mm -hmm. So how? what do you want to share with our listeners? Well, um, well, first of all, my name is Mickey Rose. Um, uh, I'm an inter intergalactic superstar. <laughs> On a tour around the universe, um, going through different dimensions, becoming super famous and amazing. Um, yeah, so one of the stories that I found kind of interesting uh, in my life is the story how I moved to another country, to Berlin. Um, how I did it is, I'm not entirely sure how, like, what was the, like, I didn't, so I didn't, ha I didn't really have any plan. Um... I only had like 200 bucks, uh, my guitar, um, and well, this this is basically it. Yeah, um, I found some guy in couch surfing. I could live at his place for like a couple of days, for like four days, I think. And that was the whole plan. And uh, for some reason, back in the day, it seemed really enough to move to another country, and um, you know, kind of change your life forever, 100 degrees. Um, yeah. But what would you say, what made you move to Berlin? Why not any other place in the world? Why Berlin? Uh, honestly, I have I have no idea. So, um, I was... Probably to meet me, right? Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, so in the stars, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, so, the deal is, I was... Um, so, I was born in Russia, so I was in Moscow at the time. And uh, I was kind of depressed or something because I wasn't I wasn't really sure. Like I d definitely didn't want to be there, but I had no connection to the outside world, like outside of Russia, right? So, and that was a bit of a tricky situation because you gotta go, but you have nowhere to go. And um, at some point, I met this guy, he's a friend of my mother's, and uh, we started talking. Um, he's like in his fifties or something, and. Uh, He was like, "Yo, um, so there's he. Well, he tells me a story that he, that he lived in Berlin for like 15 years back in the 90s, or like around, I don't know, 10 years or something. And he was like, "Yeah, it's a cool place and uh, whatever this and that." And um, uh, tells it tells me about his crazy story, how he got like, I think he has, he has like four wives now, and six kids. Good or job. Some, and six kids, yeah, all made in Berlin." <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, he's a, he's a character for himself, you know what I mean? So <laughs> maybe once you're going to have him in your podcast, um, uh, yeah. And well, we were just like, uh, just drinking vodka and playing video games. And, <laughs> and he was like, telling me some stories. I was like, well, yeah, this is fun. And, um, yeah, I booked a ticket and, and, uh, in a, in two weeks I was just gone. Nice. Um, yeah, I didn't really think two times and, um. Uh, But that was it. That was basically. I didn't even look at pictures of Berlin, man. I didn't even like go on the internet like Berlin. Like, what is in Berlin? Like, what's Berlin? Like, I don't. I don't care, man. <laughs> so what I can see is that you basically you don't think too much. You just do, right? Well, I try to. I try to. Um, of course, we're all, you know, um, humans, so to say, and. Um, Sometimes it's uh you know it's not that easy you know to kind of like overcome your own fears and stuff you know, um, but I think it really depends how serious you take in your own situation. A lot of it depends on your freedom in your on um, consciousness. I would say you know because the more serious you take your life, uh, the more serious the problems kind of seem, 
And if you just kind of go with the flow, it's so uh, like, you know, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Mm. Like you get out of life what you ask for. Pretty much. Um, it's, I think it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a very like huge philosophy. Uh, it's a, like very uh, complicated philosophy. Um, I mean, generally, I do believe that uh, uh, you do get what you're, what you are in life. Um, sort of like the frequency that you are vibrating on is what you're getting. Um, but also, there, I think there's a lot of small details um, regarding like how much you want it and uh, maybe you take in too much pressure on life uh, in terms of like how you want to get it and what you want to get and stuff like that. And uh, um, sometimes we wish too much, you know what I mean, instead of just letting things go. And just kind of attracting things instead of like kind of trying to have them, you know what I mean? So I think there's a lot of details to that uh, that are kind of overlooked. Uh, but generally, yes, generally, I think, um, yeah, you get what you are, basically. So uh, what did you get so far in your life? What is the kind of proof to your theory? Well, first of all, when I came here back to the story right i mean pretty much everything that was happening back then it was really interesting actually because um so the deal is i was i remember myself being on the plane and i told myself that i'm never coming back uh, of course i came back uh, but <laughs> <laughs> but i told myself i'm never ever forever coming back and um um so basically i left all the previous life behind right so there's nothing there but I had, since I had no plan and had no like expectations and I didn't even like know what Berlin is, uh, I, I I didn't really I I didn't really have anything to think about. You know what I mean? I didn't really have to. I didn't really have any thoughts on the future and what's going to happen to me because I couldn't even like visualize anything about Berlin because I didn't really know anything. You know, so I was on a plane and I felt. First of all, I felt really free because, well, finally I'm just living this whole, you know, post-Soviet horror behind me. <laughs> and um, another thing is just, like, I was kind of in a space where, like, you're really in the present moment because what's, what was, like, what's in the past is in the past and what's in the future hasn't come yet, you know? And I, I, can't, I, don't, I can't even think about it. Like, I, I, I can't even, even, like, uh, uh, generate a thought about it, you know, because I... I I have no connections, you know what I mean? So, like, no visions, nothing. So, yeah, I was there on the plane and kind of like, well, this is cool, you know? And like a white sheet of paper. And when I came here, it was like, it's like pretty much everything I would think about was just like come to me instantly. Like, I would think about something, like I want a bike. And then, like, next day, somebody's like, yo, there's like a bike auction police bike auction you want to go join like i take get a bike i'm like yeah sure uh and i was like at some point i was so pretty much everything comes to the job comes to the first job that i got or the first um, uh room like a, a flat where i could uh, move into and all kind of connections with people pretty much everything would just come to me like at a blink of an eye, I was just like, I want it, like, here we go, you have it, you know what I mean? Like, I want it, I got it. <laughs> so, um, and that was really interesting, that was a really interesting um, to look at, because um, that was like, wow, like, I knew that I, um, sort of like, that we live in a sort of like magic world, but this was like a, a step for me to prove that this is actually true, you know what I mean? And that was crazy. But uh, you haven't experienced something like that before? Like, this was the first time in Berlin that you, like, really realized <laughs> it? Yes, I think so. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I mean, it was kind of like, I was, as I, as I said, like, I was thinking about it. I was like, oh, yeah, maybe it's just, maybe it's like that. But uh, I didn't really have, like, an actual proof. You know what I mean? It was more like a theory, you know? Because, like, um, sometimes when they're... Uh, the like when the proof is too small you tend to like kind of like not believe in it you know you know what i mean like put it to the side 
because oh, maybe it's a coincidence oh maybe it's that maybe it's something else you know um but then when something is like regularly happening to you and you also like kind of doing like a super crazy uh, you know move super crazy something um that is um, kind of opening your eyes um about their nature of reality you know mm -hmm. somehow so what was your biggest proof so far well uh that moment when i came here and also the other i think then for for a few years i was kind of like kind of drifting by and um it's funny how like sometimes we we even forget what we've been through like for example so i had this uh, crazy experience right that was just totally changed my life but then for the next few years i was kind of uh in the like um inactive mode you know somehow i got to the point where i stopped believing in everything i was i was believing before first i don't even know how it happened you know what i mean um and then it's like three or four years down the road i just realized wow like i lost all their improvisational spark that i had before and i don't like out of i'm not even myself anymore and i was like i need i need to get back to myself you know and it took me another few years to just kind of come back to that at least to the belief that some things some things are they could be happening because just of your uh wish or something but mm -hmm. because of your desire and uh because yeah somehow i forgot everything i learned you know and it's really it happened so like sort of um what is it fluently yeah, not fluently but like um like i didn't even notice how the time passed and i totally became a different person that i wasn't really you know inside um maybe it was the surrounding maybe recent people i knew i don't i don't know what happened uh but then after that i was like okay you know i need to get back because like this is weird um then it took me a few years and uh just recently actually like a year ago um i started reading a book um f actually f uh, by like a russian guy um his second name is zeland so vadim zeland and um the book is called transurfing reality and he talks a lot about this whole concept of um um attaining things uh by sort of just like wishing or um kind of pushing out you this sort of energy or frequency into the world um the thing is it's like uh well there's basically it was like an audio book which is like 36 hours of material wow so it's not easy to like you know uh, put everything together in like five minutes that i'm gonna be talking about it i guess <laughs> but generally um there is sort of a specific blueprint on how you can get something in case you know you you want something um there are a series of steps and uh, through throughout each of the step you also not just supposed to do something but you're also supposed to feel a certain way mm -hmm. you know um and i was i decided that i want to uh, move flat and uh, well as you know finding a flat in berlin is quite We're, hard yeah especially if you're like freelancer and don't have like a permanent job so um <clears throat> but i was like yeah i'm just gonna do it and i'm gonna i'm gonna prove it to myself one more time <laughs> you know but this time i'm, I'm not just gonna be like wishy-washy about it i'm actually just gonna do like all the steps just like one two three four five and i'm gonna do exactly what this book is saying you know what i mean just to see you know what i mean just to be like uh okay i'm just gonna try that and see what happens and um little did i know i got the perfect flat i got so every little point that i thought to myself i would like to have in my flat which was like i want supermarket around the corner i want the gym to be around <laughs> the corner i want to be in the neighborhood was like chill there is no weirdos no junkies no drugs no weird people i wanted to be a sunny flat was like uh you know happy vibes and stuff like that uh also like you know have like a bazillion wishes about my flat uh, but i was like i'm gonna get it <laughs> and guess what i got it and i got literally every single point that i had on my list about 
how what kind of flight I wanted to have, I got it. You know what I mean? That's awesome. This is crazy. I was just like, when I got it, I was like, this is unreal, man. This is just not, like, this is not happening to me. You know <laughs> what I mean? Um, so, yeah, that was cool. Uh, somewhere along the way, actually, I was proposed another flat. But I was like, I'm not going to take it because it's not what I want. <laughs> <laughs> Which in Berlin seems like you just take it, you know what I mean? Like this is your like you know there's you're not you're not gonna get anything else. I'm like fuck off, <laughs> I'll get a better one. <laughs> um, yeah. So, what else? I totally faked all the documents. And that helped. <laughs> yeah, I mean this is a good proof that you don't have to be afraid that you don't get what you want, right? Exactly. I mean. You shouldn't surrender to the things you. Um, I don't think you should like really compromise. I think compromising is um, is bad, you know. Like if you want something, if you really truly believe that you uh, belong somewhere or you deserve something, you should get that, not uh, not something in between. You know what I mean? Um, I mean sometimes it's it's harder to get things that are sort of like a more far away like for example if i'll be like i want my own mansion in one month you know what i mean this is like pff, chill man <laughs> <laughs> uh, but if you take like sort of realistic next step what would be like a more realistic next step for you you know what i mean just kind of ask yourself internally and be honest with yourself and then and then you find out what you actually feel like that you what you deserve you know so it's very important like we could wish anything we want but then if you ask yourself deep inside what do I actually deserve? What's my next step? What do I deserve? You know what I mean? And then this is pretty, pretty much, I think, going to be the answer to your question. Yeah, you should, shouldn't should rush into things, right? You shouldn't be stressed about it. Um, Just yeah. put it out there and take the next logical step. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I mean, that helps. It's pretty, it's, I think it's harder to do when you're like younger, if you're like 21 or something. Yeah, I mean, I remember myself when I was 21, I was just like... Pfft my head was exploding all the time with all this crazy emotions and stuff and it's like it was hard to just like you know come down to earth and chill so but now it's better that's awesome man very cool story mm -hmm. um, I would say we do a short break mm -hmm. and then we continue afterwards okay sure <laughs> All right, so let's continue with our podcast. Mm -hmm. First session. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm here with Mickey. And uh, yesterday we already met. We talked a little bit and Mickey said that uh, he is very eager to create a kind of com community here in Berlin mm -hmm. with people that are open-minded, that want to, yeah, manifest things. Um, well, um uh Yes, I I'm looking to um, kind of already started um, to create a community. Uh, it's called Aliens and Humans. So what this whole thing is about is that I know um, from my own experience as well, there is a lot of people that are, you know, kind of special in some sort of way. Um, they have a special view in life, and um, you know, just like a big crazy people, <laughs> and. Um, very often those people, they don't really have other people to talk to about some of the topics, you know, uh, because honestly, like in a day-to-day -day conversations and a day-to-day -day life, you don't get to talk about a lot of like spaced out crazy shit too much, you know, it was like on the party or somewhere on the job, you know, so even with your friends, so... Um, it's not often that you get to talk about it. I think we talked we talked about it with you yesterday that you pretty much like had never talked about some of the topics in your life ever. You no. know what I mean, exactly. So we, this is great. Like I'm tr I'm I'm trying to find those people to talk to, but it's also not so easy for me. Like I mean, yesterday we were talking about some like interdimensional traveling and what's consciousness and what's like how we perceive reality and like where the laws of physics are coming and from and all this crazy stuff you know and you can you change the laws of physics by percept by changing your consciousness you know stuff like that and um yeah we don't get to talk about it quite a lot you know and uh, um i know there's a lot of people that think about it and they also feel kind of you know left out and kind of lonely because they have nobody to share this, uh, those uh, thoughts with. So I, um, yes, I decided that I want to 
create a community for those people so they never feel lonely again so they um, always have s somebody they can share their crazy thoughts with and uh, that they're going to be accepted uh, in the society at least in this group of crazy people <laughs> uh, so yeah if you're a weirder uh, crazy person hit me up uh, the community is called Ellen's and Humans. Uh, you can find me on Instagram. Um, you know, send me a message and uh, yeah, we talk. We, and meet. we might end up here creating another podcast. Uh, yeah, it was like, uh, you know, a bunch of crazy people. Like, Ooh. <laughs> I mean, we have two more spots <laughs> in the studio. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so f it's really funny though, because those people, like, I've, I've had a few meetings already, you know, and those people, they are really. They're, they come from such different backgrounds. Like some of them are like really into like yoga and you know this kind of like world of like astral bodies and whatever. Other people are like straight up just like um, work in IT or like engineers and see the world in completely like mathematical way. But still, those people are able to communicate. You know what I mean? This was really fascinating me because like. They're so different, but they're still, like, able to find common ground on some of the topics and, like, talk about it and all this. So that was really, it was it was really interesting to observe, you know what I mean? Something that seems like it never, never going to match. But then uh, maybe those people are so crazy that they're, like, you know, able to find the common ground, you know what I mean? Um, so, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you have just to try <coughs> and see what kind of vibe the person has. And if the vibe matches to you, it right. doesn't matter where the person is coming from, mm -hmm. what the person has experienced so far in their life. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, <laughs> we d we don't have a lot of common ground, mm -hmm. but we are both interested in like creating stuff and mm -hmm. uh, thinking outside of the box, I guess. Mm -hmm. And this is the kind of topic that we are talking about. Mm -hmm. And that's how we found found us, I guess. Yeah, exactly. So this is um, <sighs> so the shared experiences. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um. Yeah. Do you wanna do you wanna hear about something in particular? Hmm. I mean, you already told us a lot of interesting stories. Mm -hmm. So, how your life changed and the like the circumstances that happened into your life. Um, do you have like any thoughts on your future or can you tell something about it, the future? Um, yeah, sure. I'm now I'm working more than ever on my, uh, music side. So, well, basically I'm a musician since like forever. And, uh, yes, now I'm working more on that and, uh, uh, trying to find ways to become a superstar on planet earth. And uh, manifesting that a lot. <laughs> um, yeah, kind of seeing that happened in the, in motion, you know, <laughs> right inside of the picture. Yeah, it was kind of funny. I was I remember I was uh, on the concert ba way back in the day. I was in some like big band concert and I was just standing there in a crowd and I was like, oh, it's all these people crowd weird. And I was like, where is actually the best? place to view a concert you know you're when you're at a concert and then after some thinking i just realized the best place is on the stage man <laughs> <laughs> yeah so after that <laughs> since the since then i decided okay i'm just i'm only there you know not, not in the crowd you know what i mean <laughs> um yeah but music was also always a you know part of my life since i was very little and um um i like what i like about music is that like it kind of gives you a um, connection to the, some sort of like a special connection to the universe. Um, I think we talked about it yes yesterday with you that like, um, what I, what's cool about music is that uh, it, it could be introverted and extroverted. So like if you're, when you're recording music and you're in the studio, uh, it's kind of with yourself, maybe some other musicians, and you're kind of in the working process of creating music and recording it. It's really introverted, so you have to reflect a lot on yourself and like think about you and how you communicate with the world and what your life is and 
artist person human alien you know and kind of having all this putting all those experiences together but then when you're playing music when you're on stage when you're in the moment you know what i mean it's, it becomes very extroverted because like all of this that's been inside of you for all this time you got to let it out and you got to show it and you got to be like this is it you know like like really giving this energy to the people to the universe to every everywhere and everywhere around you and then at some point you know it's just like i i this moment's really just like you you i don't know i sit at the piano play a song and i sing and then and this moment nothing else exists however my troubles or my life would be at the moment you know there is literally nothing else it's just me and this like pure connection to god you know and um this that's is, what we're all striving for for yeah. this moment yeah and it's sometimes it comes in life yeah <laughs> but you never know when yeah when. yeah exactly yeah and with music it's like it's it's really strange how deep this um how how deep uh sort of your the mu how deep the music resides in your soul so yeah this is um Music is kind of out of, from outer space, I guess. Somehow, <laughs> yeah. What kind of music are you producing? Mm. Well, I mean, since I started playing piano when I was seven, and then guitar, and then singing, and then working on the computer a lot. Um, uh, so what I'm I'm trying to like I I did a lot of different genres, but you know, did rock, did, try to mix electronic music with rock. And all this together, but then somehow I sort of found myself, and because um, I never really wanted to do like one genre, because I felt like this is a bit too limiting. Limiting, yes. Also, um, you're also limiting yourself to one genre. Like, for example, if you are, uh, I don't know, becoming famous at some point, and then you just always did this one thing. And then people are gonna be remembering you for this just one thing, you know. Then if you switch your thing, then people are gonna be like, "Oh, like he's not what he used to be," or like, maybe you're gonna gain some new fans, but maybe not. And maybe this is—I mean, a lot of times, uh, I think more than less, it's pretty much the end of people's careers when they like try to change stuff too much. Uh, so I didn't want that, and I was like, I want to be f first of all, I want to be free in my own expressions, and uh, um, I want to create just something new. You know what I mean? Something that um, people haven't really heard before. You know, so which is not really easy to do, to be honest. Like it took me many years to figure out the concept. You know, of like how can I put those samples together? How can I like in which way I have to record stuff? You know, because uh, I mean, it always comes down to tech, um, technical side, you know what I mean, how you do this. And um, yeah, it took me quite a few years to find something that sounds like pop music, but it's also kind of like weird and a bit crazy and a bit, you know, out of regular, you know what I mean? Like you wouldn't listen to it and be like, oh yeah, I've heard this like many times before, you know? If you're like listening to this, oh, this is something... Uh, special you know but still you could like it it's been written for a majority of people so it's like it's like pop music you know but it's um definitely not something regular that you hear all the time so you basically yeah. you wanted to create a unique sound that represents yourself yes exactly exactly but yeah but creating unique sound actually very it's creating unique sound is a very interesting topic because i'm not sure if uh what does it come from? Like, for me, for me, I know that I'm sort of like a rebel person, so I pretty much, like, go against whatever people tell me to do. And I rather, I'd rather uh, disagree than agree. And uh, for me, creating unique sound was the only way, you know? And also, amount of talent that you have, because I don't, if there is... There is you, you you. I don't think you can create something really entirely new or uh, this sort of unique thing or unique sound if you don't have if you're not talented enough, you know, or if you're not really like deep into the topic enough, you know. Um, I know that a lot, like especially these days, 
um, music uh, musicians um, is, is they're less musicians and more like show people, you know. So they spend more time being flashy and cool rather than actually going down uh, and learning new things and uh, uh, experimenting and sitting alone for hours in front of stuff and like just trying to figure out some new. Uh, combinations, some new sounds, some new, you know, things, and um, it's kind of sad because that makes like basic music these days kind of sound generic. Um, it's it's just, I mean, you go on Spotify, there's like a bazillion different artists, you know, but it's very hard to find something that you know pops out. Exactly, something special, something you can be like, whoa, this this person is, uh, you know what I mean, is different. Mm-hmm. It yeah you don't get you don't get this a lot you know because um yeah it's it's easier now to do music and to record music and to make music and therefore you don't really need to be an amazing musician to record something you know if you take um I mean most of like hip hop and trap what music right now whatever this thing is uh, you don't really need to be a good musician to do that and uh, I mean you don't really actually need to be a musician to do that at all. You know, like, to learn how to, like, do beats or something, like, to put drum samples together and make some background noises. I don't think you need more than a couple months, you know what I mean? And um, so, yeah. So I guess you already made some listeners curious. Where can we find your music? Um, yes, I'm re releasing uh, first EP... Uh, I guess in September. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram for now and um, see where it goes. Yeah, September. I don't. But I don't think we have a date yet. But uh, I think it should be in September. Yeah, the first EP, Make Your LCP. Looking yes. forward to it. Yeah, sure. Of course, me too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, I've been doing music for like what, fifteen years, twenty years. Uh, of course, I was uh, putting out some of the songs before, but. It wasn't really like serious, but uh, no, I think uh, the time has come. Yeah. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> yeah, right. All right, so I think we have finished the music part. We will yeah. make another short break right. and then we will continue with our last part. Oh, yeah, quite see cool. you guys. <laughs> okay, so we are back with our third part. Uh, Mickey. Back to business. Back to business. <laughs> What do you want to talk about? Um, yeah, so we decided we're gonna uh, uh, elaborate a little bit on the um, what actually happened when I came to Berlin, because uh, I think this part kind of was was kind of left out. And uh, I'm just gonna tell you a story. Um, uh, I'm gonna keep it short. Um, I try to keep it short. It's actually a long story, you know. But kind of um, what actually happened, you know. I mean, the guy was 200 bucks and a guitar goes to Berlin to become a fucking superstar. And what happens then? You know what I mean? It was no plan. So what happened is, uh, so I was on the plane, right? I told you the story. Um, the past was in the past and the future was in the future and it had nothing to think about. It's just a blank sheet of paper, right? Um, so yeah, I arrived in the airport uh, trying to find this address where this guy lives. So I had this uh, place for four days. I could live at uh, some guy's place from couch surfing for like four days. And um, yeah, so I'm sitting there waiting for this guy. Um, he comes around. He kind of looks different than in the picture because in the picture he was like 25. In real life, he's like 43 or something. And I'm like, <laughs> right, <laughs> right. <laughs> and um, um, yeah, we, we start talking. We, we, we come into his place, start talking, and uh, um, at some point, uh, I realized that. Uh, so, like, everything that he has in his uh, one-room apartment, uh, which is very, like, a humble apartment, nothing really, not, nothing much there. But um, everything is kind of uh, kind of orange. So, he would have, like, an um, orange bed and um, orange walls, orange curtains, orange tables, orange chairs. Fucking everything's orange, man. I was like, okay, that's totally not weird. That's fine. And <laughs> so you don't, so you don't have to ask for his favorite color. <laughs> yeah, 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 right. Um, 
And then he also had just two books, and uh, first one was Bible, and the second one was Bible. <laughs> so he had two Bibles, just they just took a huge shelf with nothing there, and it's like two Bibles <laughs> next to each other. Pick like, up. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, you know, in case uh, they're going to rewrite the Bible, we're going to have, <laughs> you know, <laughs> some spare Bibles, man. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, so... Uh, he has no photos of himself or anybody, nothing. So you you don't really know anything about this guy. You know what I mean? So you can really like from from the look of the place, you can really s- tell like what kind of person that is. You know what I mean? And um, so we start talking, and um, so this guy is a pilgrim, and uh, so pilgrims are people that are basically walking everywhere all the time, nonstop. They never ride. They never, basically, they never take a ride. They always walk. Like, they would never ride a bus or a train or a bicycle or anything that has wheels. So there's no wheels, just walking. And even if you want to live in another country and you want to uh, start your new life in Rome, uh, what this guy did, uh, he went to Rome. He basically, uh, you know, went there, but went there by his feet. And uh, lived there for some years, and then he was like, you know what? Now I want to live in Berlin. And he fucking went to Berlin, man. Crazy guy. Um, yeah. So, oh, I was like totally normal. I'm into this. I mean, the weirder the better, I guess. <laughs> uh, definitely better than the post-Soviet Union country, man. So, um, I, I was just like, I'm just gonna go with the flow, man. <laughs> Whatever happens. And, um, yeah, and he, he said in a couple of days, got be four, other, four or five other guys come into his flat. And um, from all over the world, different, like Spain, USA, Netherlands, Latvia, I don't know. Um, and I was like, cool. I don't know how we all going to live in one room apartment, in this one room of one room apartment. But uh, I guess this is fine. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, uh, they all came and, uh, it was actually a really nice crew to like, we were, we were going around the city, exploring the city. I bought myself, so I had 200 bucks and I spent 80 of those 200 bucks for like, uh, amp, like little amp, little amplifier. Mm-hmm. So I could, I have my guitar, right? So I could play in the streets, you know? So I was just like there rocking out on the streets, playing some tunes, you know? And then, uh, uh, we met some other musicians uh like start playing together and stuff you know this is how i kind of start you know meeting new people uh so meanwhile uh we realized that uh uh so the guy was hosting us uh he was only hosting guys from age 20 to 30 <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, this is where we started asking questions, you know, <laughs> like, is this okay or not? Um, so yeah, I mean, at some point we realized, realized, realized he's, uh, he's basically super gay. Um, but it was also kind of funny to look at his internal conflict of like him being a super religious person. He's like going to church and like praying and everything. He's a pilgrim, basically fucking walking for Jesus, you know, 24-7. But then he's like super gay and doesn't know what to do about him, man. <laughs> big, <laughs> so, big inner conflict. Yeah, big inner conflict, exactly, yeah. But I mean, whatever gets him going, you know what I mean? So, um, uh, also him hosting only guys kind of like raising a couple of questions but um uh, nothing happened so it was all cool nothing no like you know weird stories um so everything's nice and he was actually a really nice person i mean to be honest like he was he was really cool and i could stay at his place of course longer than four days because once i came and he heard my story he was like you're stupid i'm like i know man <laughs> so um yeah actually i'm really thankful to him um uh, <clears throat> so um, yeah, I was exploring the city with those guys. We we're like hanging around, go to clubs, talking to people, play, playing music in the street, trying to earn some cash. I mean, I was earning very little because I didn't have a microphone, couldn't sing. I was just playing, you know. Uh, and for guitar playing, you know, people don't really throw in a lot of money. So basically, yeah. And also nobody was answering in couch surfing. So I was like in a sort of 
position where I couldn't really, I didn't really know what to do because uh, uh, nobody's answering call surfing. I don't really know anybody. So it's a uh, oh, bit of a, you know, panic attacks. <laughs> uh, but then a friend of mine called me up and he said um, that he's in Berlin for one month. Um, he ran in a flat for the whole month, but then he's only going to be there for 20 days. So I could have his flight for ten days, and it was actually the time has come to the point when I was like, okay, I can I can take I can take this place. So I moved in there, um, and I told myself. And at this point, everybody left, and I was just alone in this ten day flat, ten days flat. And I told myself, okay, now I need to find a place to live and a job in ten days. I have no other option. And this was this was a crazy time, man. This ten days, it's like, um, well, so I would be really depressed and really freaking cry in the night and listening to some like sad music or something, and then in the morning I would wake up like full of joy and like everything's amazing, I love universe kind of vibe, you know. <laughs> and it was really it it was really uh uh. Uh, what, what what was was really funny is that like that was uh, I mean I came with like a black and white phone right I didn't really have any gadgets right nothing it was just had a black and white phone and a paper map from like tourist paper map this is how I you know kind of managed myself around the city um, just driving around on my weird bike for twenty bucks uh, I had a sound system in the in the flat you know like with the CDs and there was only two CDs. Uh, one was a second or maybe fourth uh, concert of Rachmaninov, this Russian composer who's like really romantic and sad, you know, <laughs> and f just like a furious but also sad. It was mostly sad. And uh, another CD was Wu Tang Clan. <laughs> So by the night, I would go to sleep, and I would listen to a man of concert, and it was just like, oh, my life is shit. Fucking <laughs> hate myself. I'm so lonely. I don't know what to do. <laughs> and then in the morning, I wake up, put on Wu Tang, and I'll be like, Wu Tang get <laughs> strikes again, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that was that was the vibe, man. Um, I really like to. Uh, um, oh, I also had a I I had a, a player, a music player. Like uh, you don't know, remember music players back in the day when we had music players. Uh, I I really love to uh, listen to dubstep uh, and just get lost in the bike somewhere in the middle of the night and just drive to this fucking crazy I don't know where and just get lost in my thoughts and in my you know emotions and it was it was very interesting time you know at at times I was really lonely and uh, just sitting and. I don't know, somewhere in the middle of a square and thinking like, wow, I am completely alone in this city. Like, just nothing. I changed my life. I left everything behind. And I am alone in this, like, a swarm of people and things and, you know, everything. And it's fascinating, you know, those feelings. And uh, at some point, I'm pretty sure I summoned rain. I think I made rain happen. Uh, I was... I was somewhere in the evening sitting on the bench somewhere in the city and then uh, also feeling kind of like down. And I closed my eyes and I was like, put my hands like this and I was like, I'm going to pray now. And I start praying and I was just, f and I started feeling like, and now the rain should start. And then it started, man. <laughs> I fucking promise. Dude, I promise it was just like that. I was just like, I, somewhere in the back of my head, rain starts now. And then it was just like, pouring rain. I'm like, what? Are you kidding me? <laughs> like in the movie, man. You know what I mean? But like, I felt like I am summoning this rain. It wasn't like, oh, it does rain start? I was just like, rain, start now. And it was just like, in the same second, like... Your wish, my command. <laughs> exactly. It was crazy. I was like, wow, am I summoning rain now? Um, yeah. So, uh, also another funny story um, about the 10 days when I live in this flat. At some point, I was I had so little money that I had basically no money. I woke up one day and um, I had 20 cents 
the 17th sense, something like this. And I had leftovers from yesterday uh, dinner, which is like, um, I don't know, ma mac and cheese probably, or like <laughs> macaroni with ketchup, you know, <laughs> the classics, you know. <laughs> and so I have no, and well, this is the last uh, food that I have, right? And I have 20 cents. So basically, I'm whatever I mean, I'm eating this right now. And uh, um, I, I have to go out on the street and play music. And how much I'm going to earn is this much money. This is my food, basically, for today. Like, if I'm going to if I'm gonna earn some money, I will eat on this money. If I don't earn anything, I will eat nothing. So, <laughs> but the weirdest thing about this is that I remember the moment when I'm going down the street and I have no money like just absolutely nothing just zero and i felt like the happiest guy on the planet man i was like so this is how the bottom of the everything looks like i i was like diving 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 down 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 and then i reached the bottom and it was the happiest point i was like i have I finally finally i have nothing you know what i mean <laughs> like it was it was so cool. It was like, wow, the world looks. It was just it was so so open and so like full of opportunities, so full of everything, you know. Just because I I had basically nothing, you know what I mean. I had nothing to hold on to. Nothing you know? to lose. Nothing to lose. Absolutely, and I was twenty. Oh, I could lose twenty cents though. Yeah, <laughs> that was it. And uh, it was a good day, you know. It was uh, smoking some weed with some people in the park, you know, playing some music, got some money. Went to the shop, bought myself another spaghetti macaroni, and there was cheese, and it was on sale. It was cheese on sale, man. Wow. I was like, when I bought this cheese, I was like, man, cheese and on sale, bro? Pff, fuck. <laughs> um, yeah. So that was a that was a that was a cool day, and um, I had a few days like this in a row. Amazing uh, story. Thank yeah. you for sharing. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, but then I was actually able to find a flat. Uh, and uh, a, a kind of shitty job in the kitchen, washing dishes in 10 days. So, um, yeah, um, I, I, I kind of found a flat with no electricity and no hot water. So it was kind of strange because the guy was owning the flat. He was kind of, I think, using too much drugs. And I think he lost all his money on coke and pills and whatever. Uh, so he kind of owned like 5,000 for it. He had like 5,000 in bills. So they basically turned off everything for him. And, uh, but I had nowhere to go. Like, this is the only option. And also it was cheap. I mean, and also, uh, yeah, I had nowhere to go. So I was like, okay, I'm going to take it. Whatever, man. And, um, life will find a way. Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. Um, so yeah, I lived there, worked in the kitchen, uh, washing dishes for like five bucks an hour or something, or like six or something. And then, uh, uh, yeah, it was kind of October ish, so um, it was. It was, I think it was we also have to finish now. Yeah, what time is it? Time's now? up. Um, okay, give me give me five more minutes. Okay, I'm gonna sh I'm gonna tell a short story. Okay, so it was a it, it was kind of cold month. It was like end of October, right? And uh, sometimes it would get this cold, that cold that I need to warm up somehow. So, uh, you know, I would just go to the closed supermarket, buy Jägermeister and just drink Jägermeister. And uh, it would keep me warm. And uh, um, if I want to shower, you know, wash my things, I would just go to sort of friends. But of course, you can't go there all the time, you know. So uh, the thing I would be doing is that uh, I would, if I go with random people out somewhere, I don't know, somewhere in the city, and then somehow we happen to be at their flat, I would, um, uh, you know, put a whole show of like, oh man, today was like, uh, so this is hard, really hot, weird day. I was just running around the city so much, man, and kind of, I was sweating. So, make, can I like rinse myself real quick, just like take a quick shower, just kind of freshen up? And they were like, yeah, of course, sure, freshen up as as much as you want. I'm like, yeah, cool. And then, <laughs> <laughs> that was like bad shower <laughs> and um yeah i told you yesterday the story how like uh i, I, I 
it was another story, another show, another you know performance of mine, like just like that. And then I walked into a bathroom, and then I turned on the water, and then I put my hands under the water, and this water was so warm, it felt like just heaven, you know, because I haven't touched warm water for like a very long time. And it was so really cold on the street as well. So, uh, but the so small warm water, life. yeah, exactly. So that was uh, that was quite an experience, exactly. But yeah, somehow I managed to survive this whole uh, all this horror of uh, you know, uh, it's, it wasn't even horror. It was like it was like somewhere in between. You know, fifty percent of just like end of the universe, like horror, the horrorest horror ever, and then other fifty percent was the most magic bliss ever you know what i mean i felt like i'm touched by god and you know everything is amazing so yeah kind of i was somewhere between those two things and um yeah but i i managed somehow you know I, definitely a lot of experience um yeah it's always good to test your limits exactly and finally you have no limits <laughs> <laughs> that's a very good uh, end mm -hmm. Thank you so much for sharing your time, your stories. Yeah, sure. Easy. And yeah. Okay. Let's see how it goes. Yeah, it's going to be amazing. <laughs> see ya, guys. All right. I'll see you around. Bye. Ciao, ciao.